Hey everybody, today we got a customer who's come in with their beautiful 2021 KLX 450. Uh, he's put a brand new exhaust system, which I'll show you, and he wants to go full JD jetting kit, which will get installed. Um, if you know anything about these bikes, this carburetor is buried in here. You're not just going to be able to pull it out like you would on most motocross bikes. Um, so we'll get tackling. I noticed there wasn't a lot of videos on removing this carburetor. So even though it's a standard, you know, FCR carburetor, it's pretty buried in there. So I think we're going to have to take out the, the rear end a little bit, but I'll make this video for you guys who are also trying to put in this jet kit. Cheers. Here's just a quick run around. He's put this, um, brand new Akrapovich exhaust system, the Acro pipe, I call it. How we got one, I got no clue. They're usually out of stock. Um, I took it for a quick test ride and you can smell the brand new, uh, you know, breaking in smell. So we got to put the carburetor set up to be able to like, take on all that extra airflow, um, which does involve removing the snorkel, which he's already done. Um, I'll pull all this off and we'll get to it. I just want to show you guys by removing that tank, we've now got access to the top of the carburetor. And these carburetors are built so that you do have access to replace the main jet there. Um, so we might get out lucky just by doing what the JD kit recommends with the, the jet needle and the main jet replacement and not have to remove this whole subframe. So we'll see how we go. Okay. So we can see the carburetor there. I might just unplug this throttle position sensor. See if that gives us any more room. That, no, not worth it. I'm gonna hit all this with degreaser cleaning spray. That way no dirt or anything falls in. I've never seen this top piece on a carb, <clears throat> the FCR before, but maybe I just did, I don't remember, but I'm anxious to see what this can expose for us. I do know they design it so the needle is really easy to get to, it's just a grub screw basically you pull out and then use a magnet to pull the needle. Hey look at that, that's exactly what that was designed to do, is give us really easy access. So I'm quite impressed with um, the car manufacturer for letting us do that. Because now, just by breaking that loose, if I pull this throttle, you'll see the Allen key comes up. Thank God for magnetic tips. Um, so that's what I pulled out. I'm going to use well, one of my magnets to just get in here. Put the throttle. trying to get the needle, but I think it's non-ferrous metal. Try a bigger magnet, probably won't work. No, 
So that's okay. That's what double jointed pliers are for. If you've ever seen these. Still can't get it out of that. I'll find a way. Let's see if my favorite tool, the pick, can come into play. Oh, I don't think the 90 degree is going to do it. But always got the um, the angled one. I got it out, but there we go. Okay, let's have a look at this stock jet. You can see it's from the factory in the lowest position, meaning the least amount of fuel, which that affects mid-range. Um, and we are going to replace it with the red JD kit needle. See, they have a color scheme. Blue is for cold weather temperature, like North America. Uh, red is for normal, what they call normal temperature. In Australia, here at sea level, it doesn't get, I mean, it gets cold, but it ain't that cold. Um, so we're gonna go red, fourth clip down, just like it recommends. I'll set it up now and show you. The clip is down there. Okay, there we go. This is the JD needle. Now, the thing that really they've nailed is the profile of this. It probably looks real similar. The stock, where's the stock? Here's the stock. Just compare them side by side. I mean, I can't see a huge difference off the top of my head, but trust me, there'll be something. There's a reason they got the reputation they do. Um, so I'm just gonna drop this back in. Might grab my headlamp actually. Put the headlamp on, twist the throttle, which will raise the slide up to me. And drop that little bugger in there. See if it doesn't want to find home yet. Come on. What it's trying to do is find its way down the emulsion tube. I know that my arm's in the way, but there we go. Now that slide needle's going up and down. That Sorry, that jet needle's going up and down with the slide. Our next trick will be to reinstall the retainer grub screw and make sure that spring has some life left in it. really come a long way with these carburetors uh, in terms of ease of access and uh, reliability of jetting kits i don't think you get much more better reviews than from jd and i got no affiliation with them i usually do my own jet um, settings but with motocross in particular they're just synonymous with success uh, i don't really ever read a bad review when the customer said, can you install this? I had a lot of confidence I wasn't going to be stitched up. Just going to pull the spark plug thing so I got some room here to tighten. 
There we go, that's just got a little bit of tightness on it. And twisting that throttle that many times would have made the accelerator pump shoot a bunch of fuel from the bowl into the intake port. So just be mindful when you start up. If it's a bit rich or something, it's uh, probably because he twisted the throttle and shot a bunch of fuel in there. So we'll go ahead and take our top of the carburetor. I'll do one bolt at a time. Oh, no, they're smart, okay. Really am enjoying modern carburetors. I wish they would make a comeback. I know fuel injection is logically the choice, but um, when you don't have a ECU and a special tuner and all that, nothing beats a carburetor, you just replace parts. You don't have to um, worry about electronic tuning other than this throttle position sensor, which we're not going to mess with. All right, that is the needle part of the JD kit installed. Okay, now what the instructions have asked us to do is loosen the clamp bolts, just so we can rotate this guy around a little bit. There's not much room there. We could remove this bracket if we wanted to. But really, I just got to get a wrench on that bottom uh, release point there. So, I will search for the correct socket. In my head, I guessed it was a 17, but thought, oh, that'd be too easy. So I grabbed a 16, and of course it's a 17. not good that wasn't even on there very tight to begin with I'll have to let the customer know now this is gonna leak everywhere because I was not very smart and I could have drained the bowl so I'm gonna retighten that and use the drain feature of the carburetor so that it will drain not all over the engine, but all over my stand. By loosening this, I should start to see fuel pour out down low, which I am. See it pouring all there, all over my thing. It's gonna go here, go out the driveway. So I'm gonna get a rag on that. Precious fuel ain't cheap. <clears throat> now, once all that, jeez, oh, wobbling around. Once all that fuel's drained, I'm going to remove the bottom uh, socket cap, and that'll give us access to the main jet. And we're going to replace it with the 170, um, which is perfect because it says aftermarket exhaust. We're at seat level. That's what everyone raves about and it's not too much work as you can see to replace this stuff um, you could pull the whole back end out and pull the carburetor out and do it that way that's 
a lot more work without much more benefits. So we're gonna keep cracking on this way. Okay, now that that fuel's drained out, I have removed the plug. Um, and that's designed to give us ease of access to change out main jets if we are racing in a different uh, elevation or whatnot. So now we've just got to use a six mil spanner or a wrench or whatever's going to fit in here to get our hands on that main jet that's in there. I'm going to grab a more low profile wrench. There it is, I can see it. So now it's just a matter of getting my hands on it. There we go. Pop that loose. Okay, now it's loose. A little bit more tricky than I anticipated, but I've always got a plan, so. Let's see if I can use this extension as like a skinny screwdriver. Not too long. But the gods are kind to me. I have a shorter extension that would appear useless in all scenarios. But if you learn anything, working on carburetors is you got to make your own tools sometime and work with what you got. And usually you should wear gloves so you can eat dinner without tasting petrol. But it's just not the decision I made today. So funny because I can see it right there, but can't quite get to it. There we go. It's a little bit more user friendly. There you go. Pro tip: use a little two-inch extension. See if you can get that main jet out, and because we've got the full high dollar exhaust on it. We're gonna go wide open the 170 main jet. Customer's gonna be hauling. Let's see what they had in there before. 145. Uh, it's gonna be so hard for you guys to see that. Here we go, 145, which we will be replacing with the race mode. One, seven, bang. Preload this up. Pray to the carb gods that that's somewhere in the right area. Last thing you would want to do is cross thread this. So if it's not wanting to go, don't make it go.
Mm. I'm gonna stop filming and try and focus. All right, you really just kind of got to feel this out. I can tell I'm in the threads. I'll still take that over pulling the carb out any day. Um, now I've reached my tightness point, so I am desperately searching for my low profile socket wrench. Probably right in front of me. Oh, I can see it over there. Just gonna try and wedge a tool in here so I don't have to. Oh, that is not gonna work. All right, let's see. Oh, so close. It's all right. Notice that the jet didn't come out with it, meaning the jet is in there. And now all we got to do is tighten it. There we go. And I'm not going overboard. We got brass on alloy there, so there's nothing really to go nuts over. Let's put our bottom end back in. Drain plug, whatever you want to call it. I love that feature. You know, back in the day, we used to pull the whole bowl off just to get to any jet, but now you can just swap the main just like that. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I like that. That's good. That's making me feel like a real professional. Okay. Don't let looks deceive you, people. We're all just ordinary people. All right. That is the top and the bottom of the JD Jet Kit. Okay, so the final part of this JD jetting kit is they want us to go in there, pop that cover off the carburetor, and put an O-ring around the accelerator pump uh, set screw. There's two types of O-rings, one stiffer than the other. The stiffer one will give you an 80% boost in pump uh, power, and the other one will give you a 40% boost in pump I don't want to say power, but it's how much more snappy the throttle reaction is when you pull it. So to get that off, you just need one Allen key. And then once you're in there, you can um, 
use your hands to get the o-rings off i'm contemplating just pulling the whole carburetor out to give it ultrasonic clean which is why you see the subframe being disassembled here um but i'll try and give this a crack and take a picture well that escalated quickly um turns out there's no real good way to get the carb out without undoing the subframe and I found rather than trying to pull it backwards away actually just leave this pin in and the whole thing swivels up while the wiring stays together probably looks like a mess to you right now but honestly the carb is now loose ready to come out I just gotta pop this shock off um, and I'll be able to do that because I've got my uh, jack stand there supporting the base so I'll unbolt that shock, lean it forward just a touch, and then be able to remove the carburetor. None of this was required for the JD jetting kit. It's just the customer wanted to get the ultrasonic bath because it's a couple years old, the carburetor. Um, and we're going to do the right thing, you know. So we're going to get the carb out, clean it, put it all back together, and then um, make sure next time we work on a KLX 450, we know what we're getting into. So I'll take some more pictures. So let's go ahead and watch this. I've jacked the bike up to where this bolt just slid out. And now I can just slide that forward a touch. goodness look at that we got it out jesus christ i hope that's dirty enough to warrant an ultrasonic clean it does look pretty dirty um but we're gonna do the right thing get this thing clean